I did a lot of radio because that's what there was then. And uh, whenever there was a radio show about, uh, that involved a child or a young girl, uh, I did a lot of those. But one of the funniest ones I did was a Catholic show called The Ave Maria Hour. I was going to play Bernadette who saw visions in a grotto. And I was beside myself with happiness. And it was the crummiest show, the worst script. I would say, but I tell you, I saw a vision of a lady in a blue veil. Take that child away, she's mad. No, no, but I did, I saw her, I saw her. <laughs> that really makes me laugh, I love it. I loved it. It was a chance to be dramatic and let it all out. I loved all that. I remember one day George Libby, this agent, said, I've got a great job for you. He said, you're gonna be a showgirl. And I said, what's that? They put me in this costume that had literally two little petals just to cover the nipples of my breasts. And I was a skinny little thing. I was always very, very skinny. And I looked awful and I looked flat and it wasn't pretty. And not only that, I was so ashamed of my breasts anyway. And uh, I got up the gumption to say, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. I actually, I started to cry. I mean, they were dealing with a 16-year-old girl, for Pete's sake. He called me up one day on the phone. He said, this is your winner. So he said, I am going to send you to a, an acting teacher to help you with the role. And I said, oh, my God, oh, that's wonderful. That's so generous. Thank you. So I went to the teacher. Oy, oy, oy. This was a woman, a German woman. She started to direct me, saying, no, don't do it this way, do it that way. But I couldn't understand her. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, what, what did you say? <laughs> and she said, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. And she got really angry at me. I said, <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry. I was almost in tears. I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> your accent, what accent? <laughs> A friend of my mom's, who was Hispanic also, was at the apartment one day when she saw me bopping around the apartment and she said, you know, I think Rosita has dancing ability. Can I take her to my dancing teacher? And my mom said, sure. And she took me to uh, see Paco Cancino. Turned out was Rita Hayworth's uncle, one of the dancing cancinos. And he thought, yes, that I had ability. And so I started doing Spanish dance, castanets, it's flamenco, it's finger snapping, it's uh, great footwork, heel work, which I still do rather well, actually. And I remember when I got to be about 12 or 13, I got a job performing at Macy's, which had a little theater in the toy department. Mm. And we did that almost every day after school. We would run there, put on costumes, and entertain little kids who were not paying attention. You know little kids, what kind of an audience they are. And uh, that's when I learned to put up with bad audiences. <laughs> I mean, I, I get off stage and say, oh, they were all talking all the time, it's disgusting. <laughs> so I haven't done a movie in 10 years, which is a very long time for an actor to be unemployed. And my agents call and say, you've got uh, an audition for a very famous director. They send me the script, and I work on it like a dog. I work on it every nuance, every word, all of that. Just worked on it because I haven't done a movie in a long time. So I walk in, and I show him the scene, and there's this terrible pause, and he says, no, 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 darling, he's English. We wanted you to try out for the part of the Mexican whorehouse, madam. It's a part that has maybe three lines. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. 
Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy. And I said to him, I don't do whorehouse madams. And he said, no, no, darling, you don't understand. I said, no, no, you don't understand. And I was just trembling with rage and with humiliation and embarrassment. It was, and I was 60 years old then. I mean, it was just so painful. 